my house is here and there is a shed built on to the house underneath the deck right here and in the house i have a full-on commercial fire alarm system that means detectors in every room even manual pull stations heat detectors and audible visual devices even including separate devices for the other system if it goes off because this is not the only system here the other system is in this garage building which has its separate own fire alarm system in this building and the fire alarm system in here even is protecting a separate building over there now i promise i am actually going somewhere with this that's to say is there is plenty of fire alarm systems and plenty of protection and i haven't really held back anywhere except for this shed here which has nothing please excuse the mess in here but there is plenty of flammable materials and items stored in here and it is after all right connected to the house that's the exterior wall of the house i think it would be great to have some fire protection in this building at least some warning as to if something happened in here because otherwise you wouldn't know it's not directly connected into the house you wouldn't be able to smell smoke or see it so i think it's pretty important that we add something in here so this shed I am stood in is going to be added to the fire alarm system in the house. We're going to be adding a few devices. Now really, realistically, we only really need probably a heat detector in this building. We can't do a smoke because this is non-heated space. It will be getting below zero degrees Celsius, which the detectors are not rated below zero as far as the smoke detectors. However, the heat detectors are rated down to negative 20 Celsius. But because I use this fire alarm system as a demonstration tool and an educational system, I like to add sometimes extra things to show the viewers how exactly fire alarm systems work, how they program, how you set things up, all that sort of stuff. And it adds more to be able to show during my monthly testing and demonstrations I do. So because of that, we're also going to be installing a pull station and a horn strobe in this building. Just like the garage in the house, we can install a standard horn strobe. That is opposed to what's installed in the rest of the house, which is low frequency sounders, because these are more effective in sleeping areas for waking sleeping people. Now in Canada, you are not allowed to have mixed signals. That's why in the corridors, even though no one's sleeping in there, we still have low frequency sounders. However, like the garage, this shed will not be audible from inside the house. Therefore, it can have a standard horn strobe as nobody will be sleeping in there, that's completely fine. We're going to start off by installing our boxes and pulling our wire. In Canada, manual pull stations have to be between 1,050 millimeters and 1,150 millimeters. You can see 1,050 is right here. We are going to install a heat detector in the center of the room, 35 and a half inches to the start of the plastic. So we will set this one the same. And we need to install this box to mount a horn strobe. There's not a lot of extra wall space in here. So I don't have any too good of options, but I guess we'll go right up here. So now you may ask, how do we get the fire alarm out to this building? Well, I'm now at the back of the building and we're gonna get it out here the same way the power comes around to one of the sub panels in the house. Back there a little ways is the fire alarm room, but first there's that closet. And the closet is right here. And this power is ran through the ceiling of the closet. It then goes through the deck and it goes into a junction box. That would be this junction box where then it switches over from from NMD90 to tech. Actually, this might be ACWU. I think it's aluminum. It could be copper. Can't remember. And by the way, I did not do this work. This was not my work here. 
So don't hold this one against me. Neither was this here. Other than a higher degree rated insulation, the fire alarm cables, the same rated stuff as that. And we're not even going to do that and leave it outside in the elements like that. But we're going to be doing the same idea where we will come out the side of the house right there and go into here. But I'm going to try and put it in some flex and protect it just a little bit more. Still not going to be the easiest thing and we won't be able to make it too clean. I'll show you how that runs in the house. This is that closet in the house. There's that outside shed. So that tech comes in over the ceiling of this, or actually that was NMD90 at that point. Goes through here and you can see it right there. But you can see all the way down to the other side of the house out there. Another thing we're going to be doing is installing another isolator. Right now this building is protected by two separate isolators. One isolator isolates the level one SLC, one isolates the level two SLC. Is how isolators work is they can be used in two different ways. This way is class B, but they can also be used in class A where a pair of them will work to isolate a section. But that's getting a little bit more advanced. So for this, we'll be just referring to class B as that's what we're gonna be installing here. For those that don't know, isolators are to protect an SLC loop on a fire alarm system where one SLC will be protecting multiple fire zones. However, each fire zone has to be isolated. So should a short circuit occur in one area, it won't take down the entire SLC loop. Instead, it will trip the isolator that's protecting that branch of it and keep the rest of the system still working. Now, typically you will see that between floors, like how it's done here, where each floor is on its own isolator, but also separate buildings, any separate building or structure has to be, as well as stairwells have to be, separate fire zones have to be, and, well, would you consider this a separate building? I don't know. It's still connected to this one. However, it is leaving the, the inside of the house and it's going to travel through the outside. I would rather have that on a separate isolator, so should something occur out there where the wire gets shorted out, or wet, and somehow it's conductive enough to short it, I would rather it trip another isolator than take down other the first or second floor of the house or the entire loop. So because of that, we're going to add another isolator. Hi there! What you doing? You coming in here? Come on! Come here then! Come here! Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, we're backing up. We're backing up. Oh my God. So that's the plan to add another isolator and we're going to have to get that fire alarm cable up there. So instead of continuing to talk about it, let's actually do it. This is the liquid tight flex. I'm going to run between the two buildings just as a just as a sleeve for the fire alarm cable. I'm going to be running some of this fire alarm cable here. So, Electra, Electra Alert, Electro, Electra Alert. Yes, that's the brand. I've never actually paid attention to the brand. Fire alarm and signal cable. That's what it's called, FAS 105. It's, 105, it's 105 degree rated, uh, 300 volt. But that stuff is not meant to be wet. It's just like NMD. So that's why we're going to put it in some liquid tight flex as a sleeve between buildings, which is completely allowed to do. Unless it's a burial, then it should be rated for, uh, should be a burial rated cable. This bit is all we need to actually get through the stucco that will fit through. However, we need this so that we can actually push this into the house a little bit and then silicone it and get it all sealed up doesn't need a connector on it because it's just going to be a sleeve. With the doors open here, you can actually see the fire alarm panel over there, in there, maybe. I might drill my hole in right here in this top part because I will do anything I can to not drill through this concrete board stuff. It is so hard on your bits. I think if we go right about here, we can actually keep that really close to the house. I'm not sure why I was hitting with that first hole, but it didn't work out. So I'm going to re-silicone that one. And I don't think there actually is stucco behind here, which makes sense because there would have always been a plate here for the deck. I think just two of these fish sticks should work just fine. 
I just made two holes there and they did not go where I expected them to. So I'm going to have to make another one over here and drill through this. That's just the way it's going to go. easy to drill. Now going to run the fish sticks down there. And right there, there you have it. Okay, now that that started, we'll go pull it from the inside. Now we'll, we will pull some extra here, enough that we think is enough to reach down into a module, down into the panel, whatever we got to do there. Now we'll cut this here with just enough to go in there and go into our box where our knack is and then we'll go SLC from there, spliced SLC. That's why we ran a five conductor because we need a ground and we need a two wires for our knack as well as two wires for SLC. So if we cut this right here, that'll be enough. I can see what I'm doing, I'm trying to look through the camera. Now we're just gonna see how much flex this is going to need. Which if that goes out there, through here, into there. All right, there should be good. goes in there we'll cut a hole through this right there we'll make sure to go in the center of the joist unlike this one here which is at the bottom which is arguably the worst place to put it we'll go dead center Okay, so that's what we're going to do with this. I'm going to pull it out of here. Pull it out of there. We'll run it through this hole we made. And we'll take our fire alarm cable here. Push it all the way through the flex. Shove it into this hole here in the house. And then we'll run this into this shed here. Hopefully I ran enough. I'll always be able to pull some back because I got way extra at the other end. Shove that into there. And at this point, it just needs some silicone I probably should have gone with clear. 
or black and I would have if this was the exposed side of the shed. However, it's not, nobody sees back here. And then this guy up here. And you can see this first one here never got silicone from the last guy that ran the power. So we'll add some silicone in there, seal it up. You don't need a hole there for no reason. See, that wasn't that hard. Is it clean? No, but it's gonna keep the water out. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it took me a few tries. Those first holes didn't lead to where I was trying to get this, but in the end, it turned out it doesn't look fantastic, but I mean, it is what it is. Look at the space we're dealing with back here. I mean, this is not the scene part of the yard. So we should be completely done back here. Would have been nice to have some sort of drip loop on that. I totally understand if anyone says to do that. I just couldn't figure out how to incur incorporate that where it wouldn't look terrible. I shouldn't be getting too wet, whatever. We're just gonna rough in the building first. So we need a half inch bit and we're going to need some staples to mount our wire up. S1s will be fine. Probably only need like three or four of them, honestly. Let's grab a few and uh, let's do it. Okay, our wire comes in up there. We'll bring it down through the top plate. Okay, this thing is completely dull. Apparently really need to get me new bits. That one actually used to be really dull, but I spent a long ass time with a file and sharpened it myself. New bits for sure. So this will be our incoming side here. We'll bring this into the bottom of the box and we'll leave a little service loop in the wall. And we will staple that, but we'll staple it along with our our second wire coming in. Now we need to run wire from there into this box and then down here into this box. Now, theoretically, I could just run a two wire, but I'm just gonna keep running this five wire. I got myself this big spool of it here and I'd rather use it than try to piece together all this uh, other stuff. That should be enough there.
this one I didn't leave a service loop on. Maybe I should have. I just feel like it's going to look bad right here because I can't hide it behind insulation. I guess we did on the lights. Maybe I should have. Crap. Oh, well. It's like a five-foot run if something happens. That won't be too hard to fix. Stapled within. Uh, what is it? 300 millimeter of the box or 30 centimeters or for the Americans that would be 12 inches ish might be just over okay what the hell I hear you but I don't see you You're too cloudy I'm telling you there's been more planes I've ever heard in my life in the last couple days where is you I can't see him, but I hear him. There's been so many of them. I don't know why. Anyways, oh, look at that. That's clean, clean. Now we got to get this down to this pull station somehow. I'm tempted to run it in the same hole as the power, but I guess I should keep it separated. It's going to be in the same stud anyways. I goofed up here. I thought I was starting the camera, but I actually stopped it. So is what you missed out on is I pulled this poly off to drill a hole through that double top plate and you can see I got the fire alarm cable down here now. See this is what I'm saying, it's been two minutes and there's another freaking plane. Literally been two minutes, he's coming right over me. Oh my god, he's gonna drop bombs on me isn't he? Okay, what are you doing? Coming right at me. And it started pouring. He is not even that far away. They're freaking on to me. They found me. They found me, guys. They found me. One of y'all leaked my address, and now they're on to me. It's all over. I gotta get inside and hide. They're gonna drop things on me. Whoever keeps flying your plane over my house. Well, planes, there's multiple different ones. I've seen them. They need to stop. Because it's stressing me out. How the hell am I supposed to... It's not getting a staple in there. I can't. Okay, I actually got a staple in there. I'm impressed. Now we got to put this whole thing back together here. Now I'm going to prep the boxes for devices. All we should need is a knife, strippers, and a screwdriver. And I know this fire alarm system is overkill. People get so upset, like literally get mad at me, like calling me an idiot and like thing. I can't even say the words they call me. Like people get, I've had multiple people so upset with me because I put a fire alarm system in my house. It's like, okay, it's not your house and I can do it if I want. Plus I'm doing it for educational. It's for good reasons to, to show other people. And it's like, I explain it to them. I don't know. I don't know why it gets people so upset. Everyone's so freaking sensitive. Like, Mind your own business and chill out. It amazes me how many people say negative things too. It's like, I could just never imagine saying that to someone. Like, if I, and if I feel negative about it, I'm not going to comment it. I'll just think, wow, that person's an idiot, but I'm not going to comment it. I don't know. Just people are very different than how I am, I guess. Just always amazes me how upset people get. So we, we'll use the blue and brown for SLC and we'll use the red and black for our neck. So in this box here, we're just gonna coil this up since we won't be using it. Since for SLC, we'll be using this here. 
it will be a similar story up here for our heat detector. Okay, those will be our spares again. Our grounds will tie together here. And then these will be for our SLC. Now in this box, this little stuff really starts to get wild. No, just kidding, it's not gonna be that crazy. Stop falling. Oh, you know what that sounds like? Another plane. I actually don't know what's going on. Whoa, we just about knocked all the paint cans. Okay, so this is our one coming in here. So this is the one where we will be using all of the conductors. First, we'll deal with our ground here. Bond our box, which is a requirement. All fire alarm has to be bonded. I've had lots of viewers from the US surprised about that, which I don't know. I'm assuming you guys still have to have your fire alarm bonded. I mean, that would seem pretty insane if you don't. But a fire alarm system will absolutely fail verification here if you cannot get a ground at all devices. So this is the red and black that we're going to be using for our NAC circuit here. This is a spare, which I would put an end of line plate here, but you don't require an end of line plate when it's only one device on the NAC circuit, which is the case with this one here. This is our only device, therefore we don't require an end of line plate. And splice our SLC through. Wow, that is not clean at all, but that's what you get. Okay, that has this building here all roughed in. So we can now turn our attention to the inside where we gotta get it into that isolator box and get it down into the panel. Unfortunately, the way these boxes are laid out, it looked really clean at first having all four beside, but now I'm out of room. And you see at the bottom, we have the two knockouts like this, opposed to the three. Problem is the two, no matter how you line it up, They'll be on opposite sides as the other box above, but no matter what, we're not going to end up centered. And I, instead of moving that over, I'm just going to put it up there, come out of that half inch, go into that half inch at the bottom. Looks like we got one there, but we'll blank it off or something. I got this box on me. I don't feel like getting another one, so I'll use this one. Or this one. This one's already got the hole where we need it, so we'll use this one and we'll blank the three quarter off. And we're going to take this isolator off here because we're going to want this on its own isolator. If we were to tie it onto the SLC of this module, it would be on the basement isolator. However, we don't want that. We want it on its own circuits. How that will work is the non-isolated side of the SLC. The SLC right out of the panel basically runs at the bottom here to this isolator, this isolator, but not to this because this is tied onto the isolated side of this. So we need to take the non-isolated side right out of the panel and run it in to the one side of our new isolator. Hopefully that makes sense. So 
So let me show you how this works. This right here, tying into the SLC side of this, is isolated. This is on the first floor isolator. We can try, we can test that pretty easy here. If we short this, level one isolator should trip. That's too big. Okay, watch this. Short out this. Trips level one isolator. You saw that light up. So right here, this 14 gauge, the big stuff, I, I made it easy. I made, I laid out this with non-isolated stuff as 14 gauge to make it obvious. 14 gauge is SLC in non-isolated. So we'll jump that over through into the non-isolated side of our new module. I would actually like to make a video on isolators as, as far as the hobbyist side of the community, they seem to be a bit of an unknown area to some people, which makes sense. So you're not gonna have them on a hobby system. So. And yes, I'm totally aware and would agree a close nipple or maybe a one inch nipple would totally be better for this. However, I don't have any nipple that I can use here. So this is just going to have to do. There you go. Grabbing a bit of this 14 gauge. Usually I'd mount my camera on this magnetic mount thing I've got, but I left it in the work fan. And this is spring break. This is our week off time, so I can't get it now. So I'm just gonna have to hold the camera freehand. So my apologies for that. Put a 4040 connector in there. Now we're going to strip back this whole thing here. We got way extra, but we need the knack to make it all the way in directly onto the knack of the panel because we'll also be putting this on its own knack because it's a separate building and it's just, just the SLC that we'll need to stop here. So now from here on, it's just the red and black that we need to continue the whole way. Right there, that's all. So brown, blue, and green will end there. And then our knack, we're going to run all the way down into the panel. So we gotta run it through here first. So we'll run our knack down this pipe here. Then across through this pipe here. Then we'll need to drop it down through this pipe here. But I don't like to just push into a panel that's still on. And then you can see where these will run over and go down into the knack. And I think we're about ready to start installing devices. So this is where this video is going to end. That's going to be it for this part one video, but make sure to come back for part two, which will be probably the more exciting part where we will put up our devices and test everything. 
So make sure to come back for that. And if you did enjoy this part, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down in the comment section. And if you do enjoy my channel, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you are interested, I do have an Instagram account at Pickle700 for bonus content, content posted earlier than you'd see it on the YouTube channel, stuff like that. Alrighty, guys, thanks for watching.